proteins. Proteins are one of the four macromolecules of life. Proteins, right here, they are the P in CLAP4. What is their function? Proteins have many, many functions. So I've listed one. Protein, all enzymes are proteins, and enzymes are incredibly important. But proteins can also be hormones. They make up the better part of the immune system. Proteins can be structural. Muscles, collagen, uh, connective tissue, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of different functions for proteins. What are the monomers that build proteins? What are the small Legos that we stack together to form the great big macromolecule we call a protein? Well, these monomers are called amino acids. And note that when I wrote amino acids, see how I turned the letter A so it points away on both sides? There's a reason for that. So, proteins are made from amino acids. You stack up a bunch of amino acids to form a polypeptide chain. Well, it's an amino acid chain, and we call it a polypeptide chain. And then that polypeptide chain gets folded four different ways to form a protein. Well, what do these individual amino acids look like? If you take the letter P and you turn it sideways, do you see the letter P here? If you take the letter P for protein and you turn it sideways and you put an A on this end, do you see the little A pointing away? And an A on this end, do you see the A pointing away? This A is the amino and this A is the acid. So let's take a closer look at that. This A has nitrogen right here, and that has some hydrogen attached to it. And it forms the shape of the letter A, and it points away. So amino acids have an amine on one end. This nitrogen compound is called an amine, A-M-I-N-E, amine. Well, on the other end, you see this A points away, what you have here is you have a carbon. This carbon has a double bond to oxygen. That's a double bond. And it has an OH group. But again, it forms the shape of the letter A. Now, this carbon double bonded to oxygen with an OH group is called a carboxylic acid. It's an acid. So, on this end, you have an acid it's this acid. So you have an amino here and an acid on there. Well, we've built the better part of an amino acid. We have an amine and a carboxylic acid, and they're held together by a central carbon. You have this central carbon sitting right here. And it holds the amine on one side and the acid on the other side. But it holds one other thing that's very important. There is down here an R group. Now, when you're in math and you want a variable, you might use X. Well, biologists use R as their variable. And what that means is there's some other compound down here. R could be, could be that, CH3. R could be another OH group. R could be any number of 20 different groups, like that. So every amino acid looks just like this. It has an amine here, an acid here, and a central carbon there, and it has some other group down there, the R group. There are 20 different amino acids, so there are 20 different R groups. It is the R group that makes the amino acid different because the amine is always the same, the acid is always the same, and the central carbon is always the same. 
The only thing that changes is the R group. So, proteins serve many functions. Proteins are made of amino acids, and amino acids have an amine on one end, an acid on the other end, held together by a central carbon, which also holds some variable R group, and there's up to 20 R groups, therefore 20 amino acids. Do note, as I didn't say it for the other ones, the shape of the amino acid looks like P for protein. The shape of a nucleic acid, A, well, here you have the shape of the letter A for nucleic acid. And that's our nitrogenous base, carbohydrate, and phosphate. The shape of a lipid, we have L for lipid, and notice here, glycerol forms the upright part of the L, and one of the fatty acids forms the rest. Now, we call that an L, and we just kind of nod and wink. I know it looks a whole lot more like the letter E, though. But inside that letter E, we find our L for lipid. And finally, as I already pointed out, here we have, if you trace only the carbons in this ring, you form the letter C for carbohydrate. And it works for the five-member ring and the six-member ring. Both of them make the letter C for carbohydrate. So if you can remember C, L, A, and P, you should be able to remember the arrangement of each one of them. If you can remember a little saying down here, short energy storage is easy. Carbohydrates give us short-term energy. Lipids give us long-term energy. Nucleic acids store energy and proteins one function is enzymes, but notice I use the letter E and Z from enzymes to give us short, short energy storage is easy. And that helps you remember everything in the functions column. How do you build a carbohydrate? One sugar at a time, monosaccharide. How do you build a lipid? Well, lipid, put the letter G in front of it and you get glipid, glycerol, and the id for fatty acid, lipid. And these are not considered monomers. How do you build a nucleic acid? from nucleotides that have a nitrogenous base, a sugar, and a phosphate. They take a nap. N for nitrogenous base. A is the shape of the letter caused by the carbohydrate, and P for the phosphate. And finally, proteins are made of amino acids. The A's point away, giving us with the P, the letter P and the A's that point away give us the basic shape of an amino acid with the amine on one end, acid on the other, R group all held by a central carbon.